story time. As an ex-park ranger turned soldier, I've seen my fair share of strange and terrifying things. But nothing could have prepared me for what I encountered during my tour in Afghanistan in 2019. When we first arrived at base, it was unlike anything I had ever seen. There was nothing but a barren wasteland, and the only thing to eat was this strange, bland food that seemed to have no nutritional value. But we were soldiers, and we were used to roughing it, so we didn't think much of it. One day, while on patrol through a local town, my squad and I were ordered to investigate a strange alley that had been reported by locals. As we made our way down the narrow passage, we heard a roar unlike anything I had ever heard before. My heart was pounding in my chest as we cautiously approached the end of the alley. And then we saw it. A creature that defied description. It was a massive, hulking thing, covered in thick, matted fur. It had the body of an ape, but the face of something far more sinister. It let out a deafening roar and lunged at us, but we were quick to react. We unleashed a hail of bullets from our automatic rifles, and the creature fell to the ground, dead. As we approached the body to examine it, we were met with resistance from the locals. They were fiercely protective of the creature, and wouldn't allow us to get too close. We were puzzled by their behavior, but we didn't want to cause any more trouble, so we left the creature where it lay and continued our patrol. But the memory of that creature stayed with me, even after we returned to base. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something off about it, something that didn't quite fit with what we knew about the world. I couldn't help but wonder what other strange and terrifying creatures might be lurking in the shadows of this mysterious country. I was hiking in the woods with my boyfriend and we came to this really cool lake high up in the hills. I was gonna go for a swim after a scran and my boyfriend didn't fancy it so went to scout the next leg of the walk. When I go to the water's edge I see a dead sheep at the bottom and there is this horrible metallic smell like rust or blood coming from the bushes at the edge. It is so bad like the water's prob stagnant though it looked really clear and I get dressed again and set off to find my boyfriend. Even though I didn't get my feet or clothes wet the horrible smell is following me, like sometimes just a bit and sometimes really strong enough to make me feel like gagging, like thick in my throat. I climb up on the ridge to scout where my boyfriend is up to, see if I can catch up save him walking back. I can see some of the path back but there is no one on it ATM. If we are separated you always stay still so I wait for him as planned but the smell is so strong and I start to get really antsy and uncomfortable. After like 20 minutes I give up and walk down thinking he'll have to use that path to get back to me. I shouted for him every now and again like hello mostly but I deaf said an on boyfriend where are you? In a sing-songy voice and the other thing I remember saying was I didn't want to swim with a dead sheep I was just shouting to myself mostly. About 10 minutes down it comes back to thick woods and the path gets really thin and I swear I saw him just up ahead. I shouted again and walked a bit faster something made the hair on my neck start to go up and I wanted to make sure I caught up with him ASAP. This is the part that really freaked me out, I heard someone in the woods really far away shouting hello but in the exact tone as I did earlier. I think shit someone out there following me now. I'm only 120 pounds and really short so I'm really worrying who the F. I don't want to run because if you hurt your ankle out there Therese not much chance so I just carefully walk as fast as possible down the track after about another 5 minutes I heard where are you like all sing songy and drawn out exactly like I said on the high trail and this time it was one the wind, like quite far away. When I reached the bottom of the hills where the first trail splits off and I was feeling so worried that I hadn't caught up with my boyfriend but also really freaked and wanting to get back to the car. I thought I'd wait at the bench for about two minutes in case we missed each other somehow. I didn't want to shout and draw attention but I gave my boyfriend boyfriend one more chance I screamed his name and if not I'd just go and see if he was at the car and this is the part that's really bad. I heard something come like really fast running down the hill through the trees like almost rolling it was so fast, breaking loads of branches and suddenly my boyfriend comes out of the bushes panting. 
He was like WTF are you doing down here? Apparently he was hiking back up the trail when he heard me shouting from in the woods saying hello and where are you who walked away from the trail to find me and kept hearing snapping branches and thought he saw movement in the trees ahead. He said he started to get freaked when I was moving further away and taking him over the crest of the next hill along and said I kept saying the same things over and over again. He said he shouted something like come the f towards me and I replied with I didn't want to swim with a dead sheep and he knew there was something wrong cause it was nonsensical and in a weird voice like practicing and drawing out the wrong syllables. It was about then he heard me scream from bottom of the hill and he said in that moment he just knew something was messed and he ran down the hill. We both took the trail down as fast as possible and were back to the car by dark and drove home so fast. My boyfriend to this day won't talk about it but I think someone was trying to lure him into the woods. My best mate told me a story about Goatman and said I should ask on here but I'm in the UK and we've never even heard of them here what do you think? My grandfather told me this story when I was a teenager. I'm 52 now. My granddad grew up in the woods of central New Brunswick, in a very remote area, where only survivalists go now. Their whole family lived out in the sticks. They lived by hunting, fishing, trapping, and some logging. Granddad said, when he was a teenager, he and his older brother, Duke, were up, in the early hours, checking trap lines, on an old motorbike. It was early fall. Frost was on the grass and early morning mist still hung around the forest edges. He was rolling cigarettes with his brother and they were out of matches, so they dipped a bit of cloth in the gas tank and ignited it off the coil wire, while Duke kicked the bike over. The sound of a bike being kicked over, without an ignition, is sort of like an animal call. That's how my granddad described it. Anyways, just as they started smoking their cigarettes, my grandfather noticed something bounding through the tree line, toward them. Granddad said it ran in a way a bear did, but it stopped several yards away from them and stood up, on its hind legs. It was still too far away to tell what it was, but they assumed it was a black bear because they are very common in New Brunswick. That's when it began walking, upright, toward them. As it got nearer, Granddad said it looked like a huge werewolf. His family origin was German, so this was not unknown. It got as close as 20 feet away from them and then began to eye them closely. It sniffed their smokes and then turned and hopped slash ran back to the trees. Granddad said they were not scared. He said they were only shocked that such a creature was living in the woods. Granddad said it was taller than any man, had a huge head, evil eyes, long, upright ears, hands with long claws, and had hair all over its body. I can't remember what color he said its fur was, but he said it had wolf-like legs. My father and I were camping in a semi-remote area when I was about seven. We spent the day setting up camp where he showed me how to assemble the tent and how to bait my fishing hook. I slipped and fell into the water where we were fishing, and I remember hearing my dad yell my name several times before I surfaced. The water wasn't very deep, and I pulled myself onto the rocks with the help of my dad. About an hour later it's getting dark, and my dad builds a big fire. He excuses himself as I assume he went to take a piss, and I'm all alone. I sat listening to the crackling of the fire when I heard a voice call my name from the wooded area we walked through earlier. It wasn't a shout, but the inflection and tone was the exact same as my father's earlier. But, it did not sound like my dad. I remember how confused I felt, for all intents and purposes, it had to be my dad. But something was very off. I heard my name again, this time closer and I almost walked over to it because who else would know my name out there. Right as I'm about to walk over I see my dad walking out of the adjacent woods, and I ask if he called me. He said no, and I thought he was messing with me so I let it go. The next day I got really sick and we packed up and left. I haven't thought of that in years, and something I saw on TV reminded me of that. Anyways just thought I'd share. 
Thanks for reading. I used to on a Bible quiz team in Texas. For those who don't know, trust me, I understand why people wouldn't. Bible quiz teams memorize chapters of the Bible and go to tournaments that quiz the participants on different aspects of the chapter and verses. If you get top three in the state nationals is next. We ended up the top of our state and won a trip to St. Louis, Missouri all expenses paid. My dad went with us which was awesome because my dad is a not super strict Christian and just came with us to hang out and chaperone. While we were at one tournament he took the day to see our Cajun family who had moved up to St. Louis. He met us back at an ice cream parlor and looked sweaty and stressed. He pulled me aside and told me on his way back from seeing my tanta and uncle he was driving and a car kept tailgating him. He said he tapped the brakes and started to get pissed off like he normally does but he had a bad feeling so he switched land lanes to let them pass. The car pulled up to keep speed and he swears he saw a man with no face staring at him from the passenger's side of the other car. He said he felt sick and terrified. You have to understand my dad is USMC Vietnam and has seen some pretty horrific things in his life. This situation freaked him out so much he asked me not to tell the team about it and to this day doesn't like to talk about it. He's pretty sensitive to paranormal occurrences but this is one story he says still scares him. I didn't think about it until I heard similar stories and related the stories my great-grandma told. She was full-blooded Cherokee. On my dad's side we have Navejo roots so far as I've been told. Did he see a skinwalker that day? Does it relate to our background and blood? I've always been curious and creeper out by this story. A little background info. I'm a 27-year-old guy, from Norway, who lives in the western part of Norway. I work and have a girlfriend. I'm 194 centimeters tall or 6 feet 4, in the US, 230 pounds, fairly athletic, and not scared of much here in life, but that night, I got incredibly scared. I haven't walked, camped, or done anything in the woods here, since. I have been in the woods since, but not in this particular part of the country. I have always loved the forest. It's so quiet. I love being alone, actually. If I have spare time, I always like to do things outside. Whether it be fishing, jogging, playing soccer, basketball, hiking, or whatever, really. Now, on to the encounter. The day was very normal. It was a Saturday afternoon. I had packed my tent and some food and was heading to the local mountain, for a one-night camping trip. It wasn't a very difficult hike, but it was a very steep one. After two to three hours, even though I'm in respectable shape, I am heavy and long, I was pretty tired. I didn't have any mobile phone or clock with me, but my best guess is that the time was around 8 p.m. It's not that easy to guess the time, since the sun is up almost all day and all night when it's summertime, in Norway. It was a nice and clear Norwegian evening. It was typical summer weather. I made a fire and cooked some food. I had a couple hot dogs and a pack of marshmallows with me. After a couple of hours, I had eaten my food. Actually, I felt a little sick, because I ate probably 10 too many of the marshmallows. I had enjoyed my meal and taking in the heat of the fire, thinking what a lovely evening it was. Eventually, it started to get somewhat dark. I'm gonna say the time was probably around 11 p.m. I had planned to kick back and read, but it became a little too dark to do that. Sure, I could see and all, but it became a little hard on the eyes to concentrate on the letters. I probably was a little too tired also. Suddenly, I heard a noise from a bush to my right. I turned, to look in that direction and saw it just standing there. It was standing to my right and kind of ahead of me. I've listened to reports and they all say it is some big 7 to 9 feet monster of a beast. This one really wasn't that big. I would say it was 6 feet, at the most, but it shook me hard. In one moment, I was enjoying a nice evening, by myself and in the next moment, I felt extremely startled. 
It was breathing heavy, like a very tired man, but it sounded animal-like, wild and weird. It sounded like it had throat problems, or slime in his throat, or something. I really don't know how to describe it with writing. I was still sitting at this point and just looked at it. I believe I was actually frozen, in fear. I have never ever encountered anything other than a deer, in the woods. The most dangerous animal we have in this area is probably a fox. The creature was frozen as well. It was standing on two legs, with its arms down, at its sides. I can't say how many seconds we both stayed like this. Of course, it felt like forever, an eternity. I couldn't see its eyes because they were dark and kind of in the shadow of its brow or sockets and it also had some hair, but its head was fixed on me. That, I could tell. I was just sitting there, paying attention to what it was doing. I didn't utter a word at it or yell. It just wasn't something I considered doing. I was afraid of making the first move. Now, you know how a cat slew a owly moves its paws ahead? when it think it's safe or when it thinks its prey isn't paying attention. Well, to me, that was what it started doing. The incident ended with me throwing a handful of red glowing sticks, from the fire at it. When I did that, it bolted. I will tell more if you contact me. I'm a female, and this occurred two years ago when I was 18. This takes place in Maine. Every summer my family and I go up to camp in Dedham slash Ellsworth, Maine, it's about a three-hour drive from my house. The camp itself is about an hour from the nearest town. I've been going to this camp my entire life, my family owns it, and have never had an incident like this happen before. I was watching TV in the middle of the night, both of my brothers and my parents had gone to bed. I heard a noise coming from the kitchen and realized that the dogs needed to go outside to do their business. So, I took my brother's two pit bulls and my affenpincher, tiny dog, outside after turning on the porch light. I walked around to the front yard and I let the dogs off leash. It's so incredibly dark in the woods in Maine that the porch light really only illuminated the porch and nothing else, so I tried to keep an eye on them. I was momentarily distracted when I saw a loon, wild bird, on the lake. When I looked back, I saw that the pit bulls were both looking at something in the woods. I couldn't see what it was, but I assumed they'd seen a squirrel or a raccoon. It was then that I realized I didn't see Alfie anywhere. She's an awfully small dog, and she's completely black. I called for her a few times, and heard some soft whimpering right where the dogs had been looking earlier. I took a couple steps in that direction and called for her again worried that she may have gotten her paw stuck between the rocks or gotten stuck in a snake hole. Suddenly, I felt something moving behind me. I whipped around and looked down, and… it was Alfie. She'd been staying close to me the whole time, I just hadn't seen her. So naturally, I was thinking. If Alfie is here, WTF is in the woods? I took another step forward, and the pit bulls began to growl. They were slowly advancing and were now on either side of me, looking right into the blackness of the woods. I quickly picked up Alfie and began to back up, very slowly. I'm not sure what I thought was there, but there are lots of animals in Maine and I figured the dogs knew better than I did, since I couldn't see anything. Right as I turned around, I heard the most absolutely bone-chilling thing I've ever heard in my life. Coming from the direction of the woods, I heard something slash someone call Alfie's name. It sounded almost as if it was trying to mimic me, but it was just all wrong. The voice sounded really distorted, and it almost seemed to wail. I freaked the F out and ran inside with the dogs. I have no idea what was out there in the woods. My camp is essentially a log cabin overlooking a lake, and our nearest neighbor, who is also family, lives at least a half mile in the opposite direction of where the thing was. What do you guys think? So let me start my story by giving you a little background. I grew up and live in West Texas. There's not much in the way of forests here unless you count the massive groves of mesquite trees that are very easy to get lost in, 
Yes I have, more than once. With that said, my story has nothing to do with even being near the woods or even outside of town. I grew up in a small town of less than 2,000 people. Rural but still well-defined city limits and the streets are pretty well lit at night so neighborhood kids, my brother, and myself would often play until well past sundown. I should mention that my favorite game to play was Monster, which was basically freeze tag except you got to pretend you were a monster. I always chose Goatman. I know, you're thinking that I'm going to see the Goatman whilst playing Monster and blah blah, yeah. No. I only knew about the Goatman because my parents had some friends who lived out in Bumble F nowhere in the country and it was a pretty big deal to everyone who lived out there. It was mostly just the two spooky tales of drunk rednecks trying to scare my brother and myself and we laughed it more than anything. Anyways, that's mostly a coincidence. As I stated before, everything I'm about to write about happened well within the city limits on a Sunday night in July. There was this guy named Kelly who lived in a really crappy single wide trailer, think like the FEMA trailers but this was in the early 90s, and was known for basically being the creepiest person in our neighborhood. He was tall, with curly brown hair that stuck close to his head and he wore thick Buddy Holly looking glasses. Now there were numerous legends in our neighborhood about haunted houses and a hobo with a butcher knife, etc. But you could have written a book of short stories about the creepy stuff people had allegedly seen this guy do. People said that he dug around in the dumpsters at night, and that people had seen him digging up worms in their alley, examining them, and then proceeding to eat them or put them in his pockets for later. A friend of mine's mom even said that one evening as it got dark, she saw him walk out into the road where someone had run over a kitten and then put it down the front of his pants and walk back into his house. The fact that the adults were in on this legend made it the most realistic and scare of them all. Apparently he once had an older brother named Bo, who was mentally handicapped and lived with Kelly but I never saw him because everyone said that he just disappeared. He had an old green bike under the carport that supposedly never moved again. Now even at the age of 5, I would like to think I was a bit rational but I still spread rumors just like everyone else, I practically preached the one about the hobo with a butcher knife. However I never talked about Kelly because I was legitimately scared of him. The reason why is that one night when another boy and myself were playing alone, my brother was a bit older and was allowed to sleep over elsewhere and had the back gate of our yard open and were transitioning back and forth between the backyard and the alley. At one point my friend Alex made a grunting, oinking noise. He asked me why I had made that noise, seeing as it had nothing to do with playing our game, and I sort of shrugged it off thinking that he was just messing with me. Besides, I was eager to get back to playing and it was pretty dim. We had only been playing for maybe 30 minutes or so this way before we heard something make a loud metallic thud in the dumpster. We had just walked back into the backyard and so we quickly ran to the gate and peeked out into the alley. Limping across the overgrown lot behind our house, we could see a figure moving. I immediately got what I now know as the uncanny valley feeling, even my 5-year-old brain having trouble registering the jerky, claymation-like movements. Alex on the other hand, thought he was hardcore or something because he shouted hey. In a very short, commanding tone. Hey, he yelled again. The figure spun around almost off balance and began walking back in the exact same, jerking motion. Alex had a flashlight around his neck that his mom made him wear at night and he twisted the lid to shine it at the figure. I still remember it fairly clear. It was definitely Kelly. He stopped when the light came on and he was about 20 feet from us or so. His hands looked distorted and small. Like normal at the biceps but they began tapering and getting smaller after the elbow. They were drawn up close to his chest almost like the way a chicken's wings hug their body. He was wearing flannel shirt that looked several sizes too small and the sleeves were rolled up just past his elbow. The shirt was unbuttoned and you could clearly see multiple teats. His face looked the way it would if it was mashed up against a window, particularly his nose which was without a doubt a pig's snout with two large nostrils. We just stood there, frozen with our mouths open for what felt like 10 minutes. 
It couldn't have been more than one. Ah who? You up. Kelly half whooped, half squealed. Alex and I took off, leaving the back gate open. I ran in my house and he didn't stop so I assume he kept running until he got to his. Needless to say, my parents thought I was being hyped up and panicking because we were playing in the dark alone. But guys, I swear to you, I swear to God that as I sat on the toilet that night before bed, the bathroom window faced the backyard, I heard sniffing at the window. Loud sniffing and almost a herm sound hidden behind the curtain. For the rest of our time in that house, one more year, I had anxiety every time I was in that bathroom at night. Kelly stayed more reclusive than usual after that and nobody in our circle of friends believed us. The only other time I saw him again was one day when he was working on his roof. His trailer was two lots away or so and I was in the alley taking out the cat litter box with my brother. He was standing on his roof looking down at it as if thinking about what he should do when he visibly sniffed the air and glanced in our direction before hurrying down his ladder and going back inside. So I asked then. What is slash was he? He wasn't Native American as far as I know, pale with curly hair. But after learning about skinwalkers, what with the strange speech patterns and the fact that he was doing God knows what in our dumpster and waiting for us to go away so he could run and hide, what the hell was he? I may write some more about our neighborhood in that area, since there were some really strange people. My name is Gabriel Santos Cabral. I am 20 years old now and my encounter happened when I was 6 years old, turning 7. Back then, my family and I lived in a country stead, in Londrina, Paraná, Brazil. It wasn't a rural property, it was more like a country summer house, but in the city. The property was just outside the suburbs, in the northwestern part of the city, edging the city limits and nearing the country. It was an approximately 420 square meters, 502 square yards, piece of land, surrounded by 2 meter, 6 5 foot, walls, for more privacy. The house sat in a far corner of the property, with a good view of the surroundings, 90-95% view of the whole property from the front porch of the house. The region, northern Paraná, where the city lies, resembles southern Missouri or northeastern Kansas, but it's tropical, rather than temperate slash subtropical. The city is a metropolitan area, with a population of 486.000 plus people. It would resemble Wichita, Kansas, or Kansas City, Minnesota. The landscape is fairly flat, with some hills. The scenery has little vegetation, with only some parks and nature preserves, none big enough to have a decent population of any medium-slash-large animal species, whatsoever. There are no bears in Brazil, and the largest predators found in the wild are the maned wolf, the southern South American cougar, and the Pantanal jaguar, none of which, really, could be identified as what I saw. My encounter was brief, but it was clear enough for me to make out the shape of the creature, its color, size, etc. So, onto the encounter. It was Friday October 18, 2002. It was mid-spring, in the South Hemisphere, and that night, there was a full moon, with relatively cloudy skies. We had a dozen dogs on the property, which all slept together, in a large kennel, on the side of the house. They would be pretty quiet at night, but on that night, they were unsettled and spooked. One of the dogs managed to escape from the kennel and was desperately trying to get into the house. I was alone, with my mom, and she asked me to turn on the floodlights, outside the house and check out what all of the what the commotion was about. I did that and went to the front porch, to scan the area, trying to see what could have scared the dogs. Staring at the corner, where we had a mango tree, 9120 meters, 98130 yards, away, I saw this large, grayish creature running on all fours, avoiding the lights. It passed behind the mango tree and disappeared in the dark. As I saw it, I immediately identified it as being a werewolf, like that from the movie Bad Moon, 1996, but with a slightly larger head, thicker snout, 
and bulkier build. On its hind legs, it must have stood, at the very least, as tall as the property walls, 2 meters, or 6-5 feet, I stand 1,74 meter, or 5-7 feet, by the way. I froze for a few seconds, after seeing it, it was a brief sighting. It lasted 2-3 to three seconds, and as soon as I recovered from the shock, I sprinted as fast as I could, back into the house, locked all of the doors, and closed the windows, that were still open. I was familiarized with werewolf movies, back then. I was already aware of the impossibility of there being someone who could shapeshift, into a monster, but what I saw was unmistakably similar to a werewolf. So, since that encounter, I started to believe in werewolves, only under the same concept of dogmen, which are natural, rather than supernatural, and look the way they do 24-7, a term which I only came across recently. And, that is the encounter I had, with a dog man. Just like in the US, where there are places where sightings are frequent, there are places in Brazil where they happen frequently too. In the US, it would be Elkhorn, Taylor, and Marshall, Texas, in Brazil, it would be Joanopolis and Trace Lagoas. Joanopolis has had sightings of werewolves slash dogmen ever since its foundation. Its first mayor was said to be a werewolf, back in the mid slash late 1800s. The town is filled with werewolf references. Trace Lagoas has had many sightings, ever since the late 1980s slash early 1990s. There was a series of nights, in this small city, in the 1990s, where people claimed that a werewolf was roaming the streets, at night, after dark, trying to invade houses, climbing on roofs, and howling, all night long, scaring people's dogs, and attacking livestock. It really scared people. The state police began reinforcing night patrols and started investigating, assuming that someone was out at night, in a suit, scaring people. Some cryptozoologists even collected DNA samples. As it turned out, it wasn't human DNA or that of any known animal, and it certainly wasn't artificial hair, from a suit. During 1999 I worked briefly as a vacuum cleaner salesman, yes, the job was as terrible as it sounds, which required very late nights as I was often at customers' homes till around 9pm, before having to go back to the head office to check out, then drive back home, often not arriving home until 12 to 1am I was working late this one particular night and was on the home stretch, around 10 minutes from home, when my old crappy cheap Ford Fiesta started to overheat. I knew the car wouldn't make it home and had no choice other than to pull into a lay-by on top of the big, dark, deserted mountain next to my town. My hometown is literally the last town before there are just mountain and forests for countless miles. As I pulled into the mountain parking area with steam pouring my engine, this is 100% true by the way, a white humanoid figure, obviously surprised that a car was pulling into a deserted parking space in the middle of the night ran directly front of my headlights as it sprinted from the edge of the clear side of the parking area and into the forest on the other side. It had no clothes, features, genitals and hair etc., just a white figure with two arms and two legs that appeared almost luminous and reflective in my lights. To say I shit myself is a bit of an understatement. My eyes popped out of my sockets when it ran in front of me, but then I realized that I was stuck in a dead car in a deserted mountain lay by in the middle of the night with no mobile phone signal as this was back in the days when mobile phones were just starting to become popular, but large chunks of the country were missing from network coverage. I had no choice but to sit there for around an hour until my car cooled down as it gave up the ghost pretty much the second I pulled in. So I sat in my car, alone staring directly into the forest where the thing I saw had run. No weapon, no way to contact anyway to let them know where I was and no passing traffic to possibly flag down. During my wait in the car I obviously started to wonder what I had seen. I knew for a fact that I had actually seen something and it was not a trick of the light, that much was clear. I discounted sheep, 
horses, foxes or any other animal that populated the Welsh mountains as I was certain it a two-legged humanoid creature shape with roughly human head, body, arms and legs proportions. The obvious answer would have been that it was some very strange man who for some reason was wearing a white entire body stocking. Think Charlie's green man and it's always sunny, but since we were miles away from the nearest home and I was the only car around, it's highly unlikely that someone would have spent hours walking through thick forests just to hang out at a parking area in the middle of a forest wearing a unitard. Since I could rule out possible animals or humans I had to consider the alternative, which isn't a nice thing to think about when you are stuck in a broken down car with this creature very possibly still outside. I didn't think it was aliens as it was too tall compared to the classic look, while any type of apparition or ghost doesn't tend to run away from people when surprised. I'm not sure if there is some kind of Welsh version of a Wendigo, but if I had to categorize the encounter this would be my number one choice. There was always talk of satanic rituals and witches practicing in the forest when I was a kid and also of illegal bare knuckle fights where people had been killed and buried there to cover up the crime, but I didn't think much of it at the time and always wrote it off to superstition and rumor. But now I'm not so sure. Eventually my car cooled down enough for me to limp back home. No one really believed me when I told them what I saw and are adamant that it was a sheep but to this day I will swear that the creature I encountered was something different. I've been in the forest many times since camping, biking and hiking and have never seen anything like that again, but whenever I go there I'm always aware of the possible presence of the goat. I had a sketchy experience yesterday, figured I'd share the story. It was about 4 a.m. and I had just gotten done reading that Fleshgate dump thread that was up here yesterday, when I decided it was time to go out back for a smoke. I usually handle that stuff fine, but some stories in the thread managed to get to me, partially because there were a few encounters that allegedly happened in Pennsylvania, I live in Maryland. So not in my state, but still way too close for comfort. For the story's sake, Behind my house there is about 15 yards of, thin, woods, and behind those woods are apartments. To the right of my house there is a big clearing, with a patch of bamboo behind that. All this is pitch black mind you. Also there is a woman on the ground level of the apartments that I think watches me smoke sometimes. Her flat sits on a hill, so she has a good view of my house and the surrounding area. This will be important later. So anyway I stepped out the glass sliding door on my room to my backyard, and things started to get weird. Once I got out there, I started to hear meowing coming from the bamboo. I have a cat so part of me wanted to investigate. It sounded like it was young and possibly injured, but I obviously decided f all that, because 4am the cat however kept making the same exact cry, over, and over, at what seemed like perfect 5 seconds intervals. I eventually just started to ignore it. I lit up my SIG, and instantly felt like I was being watched. After getting that sinking feeling, I started to now hear footsteps coming from the bamboo patch. It sounded too big to be a cat or something, but still too small to be a human, but I wasn't quite sure. Needless to say the Fleshgate stories in Pennsylvania had me creeped, and I couldn't see shit so I decided to run back inside really quick and grab my glasses. While I was inside I decided that the pitch darkness would make it too easy for something to creep up on me out of the woods, so I decided to turn on our outside light underneath our deck as well. Here is where I really started to nope. After I stepped back outside with the light on, I noticed the lady across the way also turned on her porch light, she has a glass sliding door that faces in my direction as well. At first I thought nothing of this, because she flicks her light on from time to time while I'm out there. I always just assumed she was nosy and wanted to make sure I wasn't doing drugs or something. So I continued to smoke my cig, still had that feeling of being watched, but the added light plus my glasses made me feel secure enough to kill my cancer stick. I started thinking more about the lady with her light on and realized it's pretty weird that she's looking out here through the woods at 4am, 
I mean she literally turned on her light two seconds after I flipped mine on. Almost as if she was signaling or something. I took a few more drags and thought I heard the footsteps again, but they sounded closer, like they were at the edge of my fence where the porch light couldn't quite reach. As soon as I noticed this, she turned her light off. Then back on again. Then off, then on. She continued this cycle for about 30 seconds, before eventually shutting off all the lights in her apartment altogether. I thought about this weird pattern for a second, because she had never done that sort of thing before. Whenever I had been out there in the past, if she turned her light on it simply stayed on until I went inside. She has never done this on, off, on, off, on before. I started to make a few connections in my head and right away thought of that urban legend where a lady unknowingly gets into her car with a killer in the back seat, and the asshole truck driver behind her keeps riding her bumper, while flashing his high beams to alert the woman to the danger. This made me nope the f out when I started to see the similarities. Was this supposedly nosy, middle-aged woman flashing her porch light at me to alert me to something that I didn't notice? I have about a 6 feet tall fence around my yard. Something could have have been waiting in the darkness on the other side of the fence, where only she could see due to being atop a hill. This also got me creeped at the cat meowing. One of those things could be aware that I have a cat, and tried to mimic the meow to try to lure me over. As soon as I connected these dots I shat some bricks and went right back inside. She never flickered her light again. I didn't fall asleep until about 6 when the sun came up. And that's my story. I lived in the Akaterawa Hills, for a time. One night, I was outside, with my then partner, in the yard, which backed onto some hills. I was using a flashlight to point out star constellations, in the sky, when I heard a rustling noise. When I heard it, I shone my flashlight where I heard the noise coming from and to our amazement, we saw a figure, about 7 to 8 feet tall, with light creamy slash gray, shaggy fur. It was upright, on two legs, and had its front paws slash arms held upright, a bit like a kangaroo would. It had a face like a wolf, but I thought its snout was a bit longer. Its ears were like a wolf's too and it had a longish tail which was also covered in shaggy fur, that curved up. The creature was side on to us, so we couldn't see its eyes, teeth, or even see if the creature had seen us. It was walking quite slowly and disappeared into some trees. At that point, my partner went after it. He never found it, though. The sighting was approximately 30 feet away from me. I never saw it again, but to be honest, I didn't look too hard either as I was a bit freaked out. Hi. Let me start off by saying this. I believe that someone or something flies around Waukegan, Illinois. It was August 2020. My father had just passed away and the lakefront has, will always be a big part of our lives, from a kid until my 30s. I've lived by the lake and it has always had a strange feeling to it. My mother, two nieces, and two nephews were with us and we decided to go to another side of where you normally go to the lake, just as something different. You know, exploring just trying to clear our minds after COVID and the loss of our loved one. We had heard the stories about the winged humanoids. I've made sure the kids know that there are things we can't explain in the area. In the middle of a hot Saturday afternoon in Waukegan we all looked up to see what actually looked like Iron Man in the sky. We didn't see wings, just a dark black shape of a man. It was not normal. We all joked it was the Moth Man, but it didn't click until I just read the story of Bowen Park in Waukegan which happened a couple of months after our experience in 2020, not too far away from the lake and power plant. I do believe in ghosts and tons of other things. I know things around here are weird. I don't know if this helps, but I finally had to tell someone. Thanks. My parents own a cabin in the woods of Virginia. Shortly after purchasing it both my mother and sister told me they thought the cabin was haunted. 
I didn't laugh but I laughed to myself. I don't believe in that sort of thing. They said that they would lock the door at night and wake up in the morning and the door would be sitting wide open. My sister said she thought someone was pranking them and even accused me of driving two and a half hours into the countryside to prank them then turn around and drive two and a half hours home. No, I did not do that. So I dismissed their silliness. So about a year or two later, I decided it would be cool to visit the cabin during the winter. Everyone waited until good weather to go. I had just bought a jeep and it was supposed to snow a few inches so it seemed like a fun adventure. I drove to the cabin and it was staring to lightly snow when I arrived. It was very cold inside and out at 12 degrees Fahrenheit I lit the wood stove and stoked it up to warm up the place up and it was taking forever. I got the temperature up to about 35 indoors and decided to go to bed. So, remembering the stories about the door, I checked both doors locked them and pulled hard on the knobs to ensure they were actually locked while laughing to myself. I put an extra quilt on the bed crawled into the freezing bed, which warmed up quickly and fell asleep. I had this nightmare that I woke up and the cabin was incredibly cold so I walked from the bedroom to the living area to relight the wood stove and the door was sitting open. I turned to my right and there was a 7 foot tall humanoid creature which had an exoskeleton like an insect. Its eyes were red and its knees bent opposite of humans, like some birds. The nightmare startled me awake. I was laying there in bed for a moment and I realized that the room was incredibly cold. I got up to go check the fire and when I stepped into the living area, the door was sitting wide open and snow had blown in on the floor. Remembering the dream and the creature, the area where the creature stood was pitch black dark, I frantically fumbled for the light switch and the lights came on and nothing was there. I got dressed and walked to the door and looked at the snow, there were no footprints of any kind in or outside the cabin door. I'd like to add that at no time did we ever arrive at the cabin to find the door open. The door opened only when people were staying in the cabin. It also was not dependent on the fire being lit. One of my theories was it was heat expansion but my family stayed there during nice weather and rarely lit a fire. I never stayed alone in the cabin again. My parents had a house in the countryside in Styria. To give you a little layout of the area, we lived in a valley surrounded by other houses. The valley itself was surrounded by thick forest and still is. There were two bigger roads you could take to leave the valley. One would lead to the city, the other one went downhill to a small village. Both roads went through the forest. I was 15 at the time and decided to spend the day at a friend's house in that village. I stayed a little longer than I usually would and by the time I was ready to head home, it was dark outside. I had a mope slash autocycle at the time, which was really slow going up hills. So, I rode out of the village and was riding over a bridge. Before I reached the end of the bridge, I thought I saw something to my right, in the forest, but I figured it was nothing. Pressing on, I rode up hills on the road and continued through the forest. As soon as I passed the part where I thought I saw something in the forest, something stepped out of it. I couldn't see what it was because there were no street lights but I had a bad feeling in my gut. I rode as fast as I could around 21 mile per hour, and when I looked in the side mirror, I saw two yellowish eyes right behind me. Whatever it was followed me like that, halfway through, until we reached a fork where a farmer had cut a little path in the forest. The entrance to it is usually blocked by a gate similar looking to a railroad gate. Whatever was following me just raced to this gate, it was way faster than my moped, jumped over it and ran into the forest. We don't have bears or wolves here, and why would a deer follow me, let alone that close, maybe two feet away? Sadly, it wasn't my last encounter with this thing. A couple weeks ago, my sister and her boyfriend were surfing the internet, watching videos on astronauts seeing UFOs and other theories surrounding aliens, such as plane pilots encountering UFOs. My sister is a huge believer in anything paranormal, that must be where I got it from. About four nights ago, 
My sister and her boyfriend went out to smoke a cigarette around 2.30 a.m. They were looking up at the moon and talking about how those astronauts in the videos they watched weeks ago really have no reason to lie about UFO sightings and how crazy it must have been for them. Within less than five seconds of talking about that out loud, they were peering up in the sky and saw an orb like bright light was so bright the light illuminated their faces as if in the presence of fireworks. It was going upwards in the sky, not in a completely straight path but was swerving a little and going upwards. There were a few spark-like elements coming from the bottom of the craft, and the craft itself was visible for about three seconds before it completely disappeared. The craft was completely silent and appeared pretty close, way too close to be a plane or some type of shooting star. They thought it could have been a comet, but also too close to be that or a meteor landing on Earth but it was traveling upward and also disappeared. My sister said the size of it was about the size of a streetlight from the ground's point of view but she couldn't make out the shape of the object because it was so bright. It was close to them that they narrowed it down to being a UFO. Both she and her boyfriend saw it which means one of them wasn't hallucinating. They were pretty scared. Considering the fact that just seconds before the UFO appeared they were talking about alien encounters, they felt as if whatever it was heard them talking about that and wanted to prove their existence. It was more than just a coincidence. They went inside afterwards stunned, not believing or knowing exactly what they saw. My sister admitted to me that she thought it was cool to finally see a UFO for the first time. After about 45 minutes, her boyfriend wanted another cigarette, and as hesitant as they were to go back outside, they went anyway. After about two minutes of being outside the second time, a black sedan SUV pulled up across the street, seemingly out of nowhere with absolutely no sounds. A man in all black came out and opened the trunk of the SUV, turned around, and began to stare at them. They could tell he was dressed in black but couldn't make out his face. Within seconds of this, she and her boyfriend noticed two other men in black standing at the end of the street, one house down from where they lived, kind of swaying back and forth as if they were trying to make out who or what they were. It seemed as if they were more intrigued by seeing my sister and her boyfriend than they were to see the men in black. My sister described them as also wearing all black attire and couldn't see their faces or even their skin color despite being only one house down from where they were standing. They were all blurred out and did not have distinct facial features. It was also almost 3.30 am at this point. The men in black weren't talking to each other, smoking, or doing anything that made sense. They were just staring at them as was the guy with the trunk open to his SUV across the street. She said it gave her a very fearful, ominous impression. As soon as that happened she grabbed her boyfriend's hand and sprinted inside the house, fearing that if she wasn't physically touching him he could have mysteriously disappeared somewhere behind her as they were running. She has not been able to sleep, turn off any lights, and doesn't feel safe being alone. She tried contacting the police authorities, but they basically told her they only take crime reports and not UFO reports. My sister said this is the scariest thing she has ever encountered, the UFO sighting was scary enough, but the strange men in black who just so happened to be staring at them so late in the middle of the night was even more terrifying. People had asked her why she didn't record the men with her phone, and she said she was way too scared to stick around to find out what would happen if she did. What was the strange UFO she spotted in the sky with her boyfriend? And who were the men in black who happened to appear in the same area within less than an hour? If anyone has had a similar experience or encounter, please let us know. This happened when I was 13. Me, two friends and my sister were hanging out watching movies. It was early 2000s, there was minimal parental supervision. At about 11 p.m. we decided to walk down to the beach, about 10 minutes walk from our house. We're walking along an elevated track that runs parallel to the beachfront. We approach a boat ramp with a few lights and a car park. No cars, no one else around. As we start to descend a hill towards the car park, one of us notices a woman there. 
probably 150 meters from us. She's down there dancing, spinning under the lights. Something's not right about her. We notice that where her tits should be there's a large single hump. She hasn't noticed us yet so we creep a bit closer. She's all dressed in black, long black hair, short. Definitely one single rounded front hump. Suddenly she is alert to us. She scrambles into some rocks and bushes and we lose sight of her. Oh well we think probably some crackhead. We hang at the boat ramp for a bit and look around for the woman but she's gone. We head back the way we came and then bam she's standing 10 meters in front of us staring at us. We stop dead silent staring back at her. Suddenly she scrambles into the bushes. Not on all fours, I don't think but she moves quick and it's dark on the track. This happens a couple more times and we're still feeling okay, freaked out but not shitting it. There's four of us after all. Then we approach a pylon and they're hanging from it as a ratty, homemade looking, massive single cup bra. We all lose our minds, race home screaming. To this day I don't know exactly who slash what she was. I had just gotten off a bus at the train station and was walking through a small shortcut. As I was walking down the street, I noticed someone at the end of the street, in the dark, watching me. I didn't think much about it at the time. I checked my phone for the time and saw that it was 11.06 PM. When I looked back up, I noticed two pairs of glowing, yellow gold-like eyes. Then I remembered that I had seen someone or something in that spot before. I stopped walking, so I could get a better look at it. Suddenly, it went down on all fours and ran off. I could feel my heart beating and my fear rising. I waited for a minute, to calm down. After that, I went on walking and looked back at my phone. It was 11.08 PM. When I looked back up, I saw it running back on the edge of the footpath I needed to use to cross the street. When I first saw it, it was on all fours. It then started to stand, on two legs and was watching me. I could feel its eyes staring at me. Then, a few seconds later, as I was still walking, trying to act like I couldn't see it, it went back down, on all fours and ran down the road I needed to use, to get home. As I rounded the end of the street, I could see it running down the side of the road, heading towards the forest. When I was still in elementary school, me and my family used to spend all summer at my great uncle's house. Me and my family slept in the same room, except for my sister who'd sleep on a bed in the living room, and my great uncle who'd sleep in his own room. That one was a pretty normal day, we went to the beach, we ate some pizza, and then, at around 10 p.m. we all went to sleep. At around 4 a.m. I suddenly woke up, because someone was throwing things around in the kitchen, plastic cups, containers, food etc. The door was open so I was able to see the light coming from the kitchen, so when I had enough of all that noise I got up from the bed. At first something seemed off. I thought I was having some sort of strange dream, and as any rational kid would do, I tried to see if I could bend fire, who wouldn't want a fire bend, right? I couldn't. I wasn't dreaming. My father wasn't in his bed, but I didn't care much since maybe he was just in the bathroom. My great uncle was fairly old, and had trouble sleeping at night, so I thought he just went into the kitchen to get some water. Uncle, uncle? Are you alright? All this noise woke me up. I said while making my way to the kitchen. To my surprise the room was empty. But the light was on, and the fridge was open, with a can of coke laying in front of it. What? I thought. I looked up to the shelf that was to my right, and I saw what was making that noise. Some sort of short creature, around 30 centimeters tall, a gnome you'd say, was looking at me, terrified. He was terrified because I saw him. I thought to myself he's going to hurt me, better if I fake to faint. And so I did. After a couple of seconds I opened my eyes, and I saw that I wasn't on the kitchen floor anymore. I was in a strange colorful tunnel. I got scared again and closed my eyes one more time. After a minute that felt like eternity, I reopened them, 
and I was laying in my bed. There were still sounds coming from the kitchen, but I was scared and just waited for them to stop. And before sunrise, they did. That wasn't the only encounter I had with that dude. But I never saw it again, I'd only hear him, because I was, and am, too scared to see him again. I don't know what he was doing exactly, but I'm sure I wasn't supposed to see him. I know it sounds crazy, but feel free to ask me anything about this. When I was out on a walk in the woods close to my house I did hear some strange noise from the woods. When I looked I saw an about 2.5 meters high creature standing on two legs like a human but the body were covered with fur and had a head like a dog. I directly started to run and did not stop until I was safe at home. When I ran I did hear that the creature was following me but it stopped after a few hundred meters. It was a large dog but it didn't quite match the typical description of a dog man. It looked fake like someone put on a costume. It looked like a cross between a domestic dog breed and a wild dog. Its belly was brown but the rest of the fur on its body was mostly black. It was kind of fluffy and had hair on the tips of its ears. The reason why I described it as being dog man-like is because it almost fit the appearance. It had huge paws, with claws. I once saw a bear and this thing's paws were about the same size as a bear's paws. This thing stood up on two feet as I drove by. I was curious and wanted to pull over and get a better look at it, but the driver behind me must have been scared because he rear-ending me and maintained speed after I switched to the emergency park lane. I slowly started to brake but he honked and I gave up trying to stop. My plan was to stop and try to take a picture, then drive off as fast as I could. I saw this thing between Elk Point and Vermilion. I was driving home from work on a six-lane highway, heading west into Hamilton, Ontario. As I drove, on my side of the highway, I saw a dog cross from the left side to the right. That area is full of trees, bushes, channels, and ravines of water that are offshoots of Lake Ontario. When I saw the dog, it was approximately half of a kilometer ahead of me. The astonishing aspect of this dog, I'm certain it was a dog, was that its length from nose to rump, excluding its tail, covered almost the full width of the lane. Eight feet. Where it was heading was back into a small valley filled with heavy forestation and a ravine. I couldn't believe a dog could grow to that size. I still remind my boyfriend of this occasionally. I have no witnesses. When we were teenagers a buddy and I were in the woods one night and saw a floating blue light very close to us. Northern Ohio by Lake Erie, near Cleveland. We loved walking through at night cause there were always creepy noises and hard to identify animal sounds. That night we saw this blinking light floating or flying in almost a hook J pattern. It was like watching a lightning bug but a brilliant blue almost like in lead. There were no other lightning bugs in season and certainly no other blue lights. We were very close it was only a few feet away from us in the dark woods, a bit of moonlight we could see shadows, or if there was a person with an lead light ballsy enough to sit alone and wait to prank strangers that may or may not walk by. You know, in case that's what you were thinking. We watched them amazement and disbelief for a few moments and then heard what seemed like an extremely high-pitched giggle, Again, young little girl hiding in woods at night to prank people? I don't think so, which then we both ran out of the woods as fast as we could. Anyone know of any blue bioluminescent flying giggling insects in North America? Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.